nothing you can do, but you can learn how to feel inside. It's easy. Okay, what I want to talk about the end. You know, like when Jesus says, uh, when you shall see all these things come to pass, know ye that the end is near or something like that. I believe, uh, let's, do, let's do it this way. All right, we can look at Matthew 24 and Luke 21. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender, put forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. And also in Luke, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. Talking about the end, right? So you're going to know it's, yeah, it's real close, you're getting pretty close. And of course, this all stems from. Uh, the disciples asking Jesus, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Okay, and so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, right, this is the end of the world. And this is when the, uh, the elect are gathered together, right? This is the end of the world. And so what happens at this moment? Well, this is, you know, obviously what it says here. We are lifted up, first the dead in Christ, and then those of us which remain shall be lifted together with them, right? So we get clues, if you will. We get a lot of passages we can draw from. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and then those of us which remain shall be lifted up and shall remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Okay, so this is what happens, and then our the enemies will be at our feet, and this is what it's talking about in Genesis three. Um, let's just do this here when it says, "And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed; it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel." So we are lifted up to be with the Lord. And our enemies are at our feet, and God is going to crush them. All right, not just not just our enemies, uh, you know, the not just um, you know not just the people, but sin entirely. Okay, and all that's going to be wiped out forever. All right, and so there's I mean there's not a there's not a you know, um, what, do you, what do they call that? The dispensation of, uh, you know, those people at our feet? They're not getting a second chance. And there's a lot of people teaching this wicked doctrine that these people will get a second chance. There's nothing in the Bible that says anybody gets a second chance after the Lord comes. And, okay, so... It's it's unbelievable, but um, I constantly hear it almost every day. There's somebody out there preaching that this stuff right here, leading up to verse 29, all this stuff is going on before. It's all going on now. All right, it's, it's all happening right now. All the stuff here leading up to 29. 29 is when Jesus comes in the clouds. All right, very simple. So let's go to Revelation 21. All right, so we're lifted up, and our enemies are at our feet, and God sends fire down from heaven and destroys it all. All right, and this is when there's a new heaven and a new earth. All right, for the first heaven and the first earth are passed away. 
there's not, again, there's not a dispensation. There's not a, uh, some people will call it a millennial kingdom. But that doesn't make any sense. So there, Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and then there's a millennial kingdom. That's not in the Bible anywhere. That's not in Revelation 20. Because in Revelation 20, you've got the return of Jesus. All right? And so, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, whose face, the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. Did you forget about this verse here in verse 29? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is a parallel to what we're reading here in verse 11. All right. So this is when the judgment comes, and that's the same thing. When we're lifted up, this is the judgment of God. We are lifted up, and our enemies are at our feet, and they are destroyed forever. That's the judgment. All right, and then so also in 21, there's a new heaven and a new earth, right? And uh, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And so basically everything that's evil and wicked in the world, it's going to be done away with forever. And if there's no more death, that means we obviously live forever. There's no more pain. I would think that alone uh, would uh, comfort a lot of people because I think uh, in particular, uh, when we get older, we endure much more pain. It happens to everybody. It's part of life, right? And then sorrow, of course. Uh, who doesn't deal with sorrow? Uh, just one of the sad realities of this wicked world we live in, right? Death and sorrow and crying. And... Uh, so all that stuff is going to be done away with. And that should give us a lot of a great hope to look forward to and uh, so and, and again here it emphasizes that all these unbelieving abominable murders the unbelieving there's not going to be unbelieving people after the return of jesus when this happens here when the elect are gathered up there's not going to be any unbelieving people still living after this after the judgment of God after the day great day of the Lord all right so that's all going to be done away with there is not going to be any unbelieving you know no murders whoremongering there's not going to be sex and uh, you know if you, you don't like that then heaven's not for you right everlasting life is not for you all right, and so I just want to share this stuff with you. Uh, I mean, it's very simple, but you've got people teaching that somehow there's going to be another period of time after this. All right, and so I just want to sort of make it simple, very easy to understand that after we are lifted up in the air with Jesus, and our enemies are destroyed down below, there is no more unbelievers, no more second chances. Right? That's it. Right? It's finished. It's over. All things are new. There's not a dispensation. There's not a millennial kingdom. It doesn't make any sense. There's not a second chance. And one thing that really burns me is years ago, I had somebody very close to me come to me and say, "Well, I'll, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, I'll that's I'll start believing then. Until I see it, I'm not going to believe." And that's exactly what so many people are teaching: is that after Jesus comes, you get one more chance. That was an insane idea 20 years ago, and now it's almost commonly accepted. And it's like people are out of their minds. And you know, there was these movies, these Left Behind movies, and they were controversial and for good reason because they were fa false teachings I, it's not from the bible and now everybody seems to accept it 
It's like, have you lost your minds? That's not what the Bible says. The Bible is very simple. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We are lifted up to be with the Lord forever. And our enemies are at our feet. This is prophesied all throughout the Bible. And our enemies is destroyed forever. And then, of course, we have uh, everlasting life. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more crying. No more death. And we all speak one language, a pure language. And uh, we will not, you know, whatever works we do with our hands will be our own. Uh, and so on and so forth. But anyways, 10 minutes, that was my limit today.